So finding a solution. The bottom line to finding the solution is that both parties have to feel emotionally comfortable with whatever solution is reached. If one of the two people is not comfortable with the solution, it's worthless. If you want to be lovers, both parties have to feel okay about it. Now sometimes a couple can negotiate, 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 and they can't find a solution that both of them feel good about. In those place, those situations, which to me hopefully are the exception, is that somebody's going to give. They need to give there to resolve it. But again, re giving means without resenting it, because if they're just giving and then they're mad about it, then it's, it's not a gift. It's very expensive. There are some conflicts that, like this that I haven't been able to negotiate. One of the classics is a baby. There, I don't know how you resolve. One wants a baby, one doesn't. There's no way to negotiate that. That's kind of a divorce situation. It's a hard one. It's painful. Now, there's another type of conflict uh, style, uh, situation that comes up all the time in relationships that, to me, is the one that usually brings relationships down. It's not the one I just talked about, the conflict of agenda. Some couples do pretty well with that, even though they don't have a very sophisticated procedure. This kind of conflict um, is the conflict of behavior. It's when somebody does something behaviorally that um, upsets or irritates or causes resentment emotionally in their partner. Sometimes these conflicts are what people call really teeny small things. Sometimes they're major, big things like uh, alcohol or uh, drug use or lying or cheating or verbal abuse. Those are very blatant behavioral conflicts. But usually in lots of relationships, I think, more, more so than the kind I just talked about, it's the little things that bring relationships down. It's the little conflicts. I know there's this guy that wrote this, don't sweat the small stuff. I tend to sweat, the small stuff to me is where the problem is. So these are little irritations, what people call the little stuff. And usually they call it petty, it's trivial, stupid, dumb little things. They start like a little creak in the Sierra, a little creak of resentment, and then you got a stream of resentment, and then you got a river of resentment, and then you got Lake Tahoe of resentment. I mean, we're talking a whole lot of resentment, and it's pretty cold, that lake's cold. So about 10 years of this, you got one big reservoir of resentment, not very intimate again. So the little things build. They don't go away. The myth is, oh, well, don't forget about it. Don't sweat it. It'll go away. They don't. They add on and build and build. And pretty soon, after 10 years, you don't even know the origins of these resentments. It's just a big mass of resentment. How do these conflicts get resolved, these behavior type conflicts? I, again, use a business style around it. So you either make an agreement to change the behavior that's irritating, or you agree not to, one way or the other. So the person knows where they stand. None of this, I'll try, I always love that one. I'll try to pick that up. You either pick it up or you don't. So agreements are about change. You agree to change the behavior or not change it. Now, if someone makes an agreement with you, like in the toilet seat example, and I said, okay, I'll agree to put it down, and two weeks later, I'm, I'm leaving it up all the time. Now we have, what's that called? Excuse me, breach of conflict, a breach of agreement. Now we have a much bigger problem than toilet seats. Now we have a problem of credibility and trust. People ask me a lot, how can I trust somebody? How can I rebuild the trust that's been lost? Well, how do we trust somebody? We usually trust somebody who lives up to their agreements, that they follow through with what they say, right? They say, they're going to be home at a certain time, and they're home at a certain time, you build trust. If they say they're going to do something and they fall through, you, you tend to trust them, right? If they're flaky and they don't do it, then you don't trust them. And also, when someone breaches an agreement, you don't nag them. You know, it's not like you're nagging them. It's called, to me, it's more like holding them accountable for breaching the agreement, just like you do in business. You hold them accountable for breaching the contract. And of course, in business, when you breach the contract, you get sued. You get fired. You lose your job. So it's serious business there. We take it very seriously. To me, we need to take it very seriously in a relationship the same way, that when you make an agreement with your spouse, that you follow through with what you say. Otherwise, don't sign that contract because you're going to lose that trust, and that's a much bigger problem than toilet seats. So to me, the more agreements a couple has in their relationship like this, the smoother the relationship runs. When there's no agreements, it's usually chaos and a lot of built up resentment because somebody ends up doing more or resenting more or it's, it's an overload. So that, oh, whatever, when you feel like that loose stuff doesn't work.
Because when people th leave things loose, that's where the misunderstandings happen, and that's where the arguing happens, and the hurt feelings, and the disappointment, and then it comes back in a much bigger way. So if you can be clear up front, it's a lot easier. Also, forgetting. You know, I hear, oh, I forgot, oh, I forgot. You know, it's like, see, in, in business, and like in my job, you can't forget. We do a lot to not forget in our jobs. People have palm pilots, they, write, you know, they have all kinds of things so they don't forget. I mean, I'm, I'm notorious. It's like, I'll say, okay, I'll go to the dry cleaner, I'll pick up the laundry, I'll do this in the morning, right? Okay, see you tonight, and I come home, and then, did you go to the bank? Did you go to the dry cleaner? Oh, I forgot all about it. You forgot, what the hell? You know, and the person gets upset. It's like, that's total irresponsibility in a way. But we do it all the time. So, but we don't do it in business. If I said, oh, I forgot my appointments today, I wouldn't make any money. People would not come to see me. What kind of flaky professional is this? So those are the two types of conflict resolution procedures that I see. Conflict of agenda and conflict of behavior. And the behavior one is the bigger problem for a lot of people, like I said, because usually these things are repetitive and they build resentments and they build nagging and they just don't get resolved. You want to clean them all up. Now there's another area around conflict that comes up a lot. I, I don't know how to frame it actually, but it, it deals with the word expectation. People have expectations. They, they're like preferences or their hopes or they're something that they want to see happen. Now there's certain days of the year that I call days of expectation that I typically get busy in my counseling practice after, like Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, those are big days of expectations, get very busy after the first of the year. People have lots of expectations around those days about what they would like to see happen. And what happens is that their expectations don't get fulfilled and then they're upset and disappointed and hurt and mad and then they want to go to get help or counseling. But the problem when it comes to expectations in our culture and particularly in relationships is that we do not communicate them before the situation. We, we don't talk about it up front. We, we assume that our partner should know. You should know what I want. I shouldn't have to tell you. Well, I mean, unless you got psychics going on, that's not going to work. You, to me, that's really a setup for failure. So I always recommend to people to talk about your expectations before the situation happens instead of after the fact. Because after the fact, it's too late. It's happened, it's done, and you're, now you're mad and it's over with. It's like if uh, my mother-in-law used to come to visit, you know, it's like, I, I, want, I want to know what's expected here, you know. It's like, what, what can I talk about? What, how much time do I spend? You know, so I know before I go into it instead of getting the cold looks and, the, you know, all that stuff. So those are some of the basic concepts that I use in conflict resolution. Hopefully that will help you. Now I want to talk about one last thing that uh, puts a lot of us in action. There are three factors that are essential for change to occur in relationships. The first one is what I call awareness. Without awareness, what, what people do is they kind of operate on unconscious, what I call automatic pilot that has been programmed from their childhood. And they just kind of do stuff without really thinking about what they're doing. And then their consciousness usually comes when, what, then when they're hit a crisis. The other step, the other important ingredient besides awareness is motivation. What motivates someone to change? Emotion is what motivates people to change. Are they hurt enough? Are they sad enough? Are they scared enough? Are they angry enough? Are they excited enough? Is it pleasurable enough? Pleasure is a great motivator, but a lot of times it's pain. I'm sure you've heard the story where someone has a heart attack and now they're scared of dying and so they change the way they eat after 30 years. And then all of a sudden they change their whole lifestyle because the fear is that if they don't, they're gonna die. The third concept that's essential is, aware, is, excuse me, is um, acceptance. Now acceptance means that you, it doesn't mean it's okay what's going on, it doesn't mean you like what's going on, but you don't put a judgment on it. You say, okay, you got some problems, what do you want to do about it? So those are the three basic components, you might say, psychologically, that are essential for personal growth and change. Awareness, motivation, and acceptance, self-love, really. So I hope this was helpful for you, and if you'd like to contact me, you can reach me at area code 925-876-4357, or email, you can do email, um, danbeaver9, all one thing, at aol.com. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you again.